Hey, what's up? Welcome back to Passing Money. Kirby, Alex over there. Today, we're going to talk about the biggest mistakes we made in our financial journey. Um, for me, uh, I'm going to let Alex go first because mine's a little, be a little different or off kilter. So with all that being said, Alex, give me what what is just number one, just one, your biggest mistake that you made in the financial, in your financial journey, period. I think the biggest one I made was um, that uh, trade I did with Rocket Mortgage or RKT, stock symbol. Um, and it's not so much because of the the loss. Um, the total loss after I recovered about half of it was only about, I think, $2,000. Um, so it's not the loss amount. It's the mental state the the wrong mental state i had or think thought process i had in doing that trade um from the start i had seen there was something happening with the stock and rather than um where the stock was uptrending which wasn't normal for that stock just to give an you know give more information on what was going on but Instead of waiting to sell uh, options for that week, I had done it immediately. And I remember you were in the same stock and you had actually waited. By the following day, the stock doubled. And because it doubled, I was already locked in that contract. And it would have cost about, I think, $11,000 to close out the contracts. And so then, you know, I didn't really know what to do. And I just started thinking like, okay, so let me wait for it to come down. I bought it back at a loss thinking it would go back up and then it went back down even more. So it was like, you know, it was all just emotion. I mean, it was all emotional in that, that whole thought process. It was, there was no rationality at, at all. Um, so that was the biggest lesson. I think, I mean, since that has happened, um, if I get ran over in a stock, I just let it exercise. You know, I just, you know, I, I made the decision beforehand to uh, select my strike price at which I'm comfortable at if it does exercise. And if it runs past it, then, you know, I've lost the potential gain on that stock. But uh, just, you know, setting yourself rules um, is would be important. You know, following that, I have set myself rules on what I need to do. Um, and, and that has, I think, affected my entire thought process for investing, you know, uh, I think that was a huge learning point as far as emotions can, uh, be detrimental to you in investing for sure in any field of investing. And, and the thing is, it's easy. I mean, cause I know we've talked about it many times. You gotta take emotion out of investing. Um, it's easy to say. But yeah. it's hard to do when you're seeing money floating around at those ungodly amounts. I mean, especially money that, you know, you not used to seeing it, you know, move that fast. It's very hard. Um, for me, it ha it's not a single transaction. My biggest financial mistake was, and everybody know, I came from Detroit, you know, city slickers, fast talkers. Um, my biggest mistake was thinking that I can game the system or I can work around the system when I didn't even know what the system was. And I see this in a lot of people, especially come from inner cities. They can talk fast. They can, you know, they can say a couple of things that they heard somebody else say on a YouTube short and they think they got the game mastered. But the truth is I was in that same elk. I was like, Oh, I can do this and I can, I can move faster. I can work the game, work the game, work the system. And the reality of it was I didn't know the system. And that was like a turning point for me in life was I always try to, you know, I talk about how I tried to create a credit card company, you know, a credit card company. It was simply getting uh, different credit cards on the website and then having people draw traffic to that website, having people, uh, apply for credit cards when they got the credit card approvals, then I would get, um, uh, I would get, you know, payments from that particular credit card company for having the person, um, apply through my website. 
problem with that was I built, I created the business with the credit card. So now I'm $8,000 in debt, 18% interest. Um, I didn't realize, you know, that that was a big market and I was just a small fish in a big pond trying to draw traffic. So, but I just thought that, oh, this is how the game works. This is how you do it. This is how the game works. And well, it wasn't, wasn't this how the game works. It was, oh, if I do this, do this, do this. And I didn't understand the big picture. You know, I was in my small mind of thinking of, oh, I can maneuver and things like that. But when I stopped that mindset and I studied what the system was. Once I start figuring out the ins and outs of the system, educating myself, putting uh, more onus into continue learning, continue learning, continue learning. Then I understood how the game was done. And I, you know, we talked about it before, how it's easier to get a million people to give you one dollar than one person to give you a million dollars. And I just realized that it's about numbers. It's about equating. I always say that homeless people have have a better concept of how to generate money than people that work jobs. Because if that person is dedicated and they stand on that corner every day and they in a high traffic area, you know, they can get, you know, hundreds or thousands of people a day to put a dollar or put change in that cup. And then you do that 365 days over a year, you can have a big nest egg. But people look look at business as, oh, I'm looking for somebody to give me a million dollars. Or I'm looking for somebody to give me hundreds of thousands of dollars to do this one, just to do one thing. You know, they have that lottery mindset about it. And once I realized it's all about numbers, like it takes, I think I, I, think I have it here because I can't remember it off the top of my head, but let me pull it up. It all right, so like I said, most people look for one million, uh, million or one, one person to give them a million dollars. But if you sell a million people something that costs a dollar, well, you know, you got a dollar profit margin, you still make a million. If you sell 800, I mean, 8,333 people something that costs ten dollars, that's a million dollars. If you sell somebody, sell 833 people something that costs a hundred dollars. That's a million dollars. If you sell 335 people something that costs $250 per month, that's still a million dollars over a year. If you sell 167 people something that costs $500 a month, that's a million dollars. 84 people, $1,000 per month. That's a million dollars. And and I, I shoot for the one of, you know, selling 84 people something that that they'll pay $1,000 a month for. Shelter. Uh, someplace to live. So if you can, you know, generate and grow a, a real estate portfolio and get, you know, 84 units and each unit is paying you a thousand bucks, that's a million dollars in revenue a year. So that's, that's another way or sell nine people something that costs $10,000 a month. And, you know, maybe that's software system or something like that, you know, things and sales, you know, I'm a big proponent of, if I had to start over again, I would learn sales because, you can get the high commissions that way. But the thing is, is once you learn the system, it's the power in numbers. That's why, you know, the Walmarts are, you know, the Waltons, you know, owner of Walmart, they make so much money because they sell stuff. People take it as a cheap price, but they sell it with thin margins, but they, they make it thin margins, but selling it to a mass amount of people. That's how they make the billions and billions of dollars. And, but once I understood and I learned the system, now I learned the system. Now I can find holes and loopholes and poke through the system. But most people just say, oh, I heard this from a friend. This is how you do this. That's why we have people in these PPP loan scandals and get in trouble with the government. They didn't know the system. They created LLC yesterday and said, oh, I had a business three, three years ago and blew up in their face. And everybody, everybody that's trying to run the game is something that they heard from somebody else instead of them learning, sitting down and learning from themselves. And I think that was the biggest switch for me because I did all the get rich quick schemes that they had out there. Um, but in the end of the day is if you study and learn the system, then you can be good at it. That's the same thing in school mathematics. Then you can find shortcuts to do it and generate wealth. And then now 
if I spent my early years like you do studying, 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 I could have been way ahead of the game. I was always focused on making money, but I didn't even have one inkling, one concept of how money is made, how it's generated, you know, the tax codes and things like that. And I would just shoot myself in the foot, shoot myself in the foot, put myself further in debt because I didn't um I didn't want to spend time to educate myself and continue to educate myself. Once I educated myself about the system, now everything, it seems it comes easily. But for me, it's just it's just me working what I know and keep generating, generating, generating to make that make that happen. Yeah, I think a bigger point to um, focus on from my mistake was just the the emotion part of it. I think, like you said, it's easier said than done to say you have to put aside or set aside your emotions in investing or in business or anything financially. Um, but it, it's it's one hundred percent correct because the like there's no and you say this a lot tell me one good reason or one good decision that came from emotion <laughs> and you know, right. you can't think of one. Um, and I think the biggest one for me too is, um, you know, with emotion, cause growing up in a family where you are giving, you know, where you're raised to be a giving person, people, they just take advantage of that. They don't, you know, they don't see it as, oh, that's a kind gesture. They're like, oh, okay, I can go back to him whenever I need something. And so the right. more people that ask for stuff, and if you continue to give, how far can you actually grow if they're taking everything from you? You'll never grow. And when you can learn to set that aside, and a lot of people have this like guilt feel feeling of, oh, you know, but they're my friends, they're my family, I want to help them. But have they made the same sacrifices that you're making to have what you have. And if the answer is no, then why should you help them? It, you know, it should be off the table. They're not going through sleepless nights to learn what you've learned or putting in the work, you know, 16, 18, 20 hours a day, like you are to build what you're building, but they still want the same amount of what you're receiving. And it's, you know, that's not fair at all. Um, people have to set aside, you know, not allow themselves to be guilt tripped just because society says, "Oh, you should feel guilty for not helping out the needy." It's not, it's not a need to, you know, give someone fifty bucks so they can go out to, you know, take their girlfriend out to a restaurant or something. You know, it's, it, you know, you have. It's, I think it's very important to be selfish, and society tells people not to be selfish, but. If you're not selfish, then people will just take advantage of you. And setting aside emotion and anything financially will accelerate your your path to success, I believe. With all that being said, thanks everybody for watching the channel. Please like, subscribe, and comment in the comment section below. And we'll see you in the next video. See you guys.